Hi YouTube, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, not bad. Um, I have a few things I want to touch on today, um, or discuss if you have any opinions. Feel free, you know. Um, I'm just going to touch really quick on uh, yoga and meditation, which I've um, practiced yoga, the poses and the religious aspects of that. From 15 on, I have kind of, for me, myself, incorporated God um, always. And there's different poses through, like, there's a practice called sun salutation that op open up some of your lower, lower chakras and that type of thing um, that I found ethereal dangers within that practice for myself so um and i do pray and meditate i've been alone most of my life i spent um a lot of my childhood as an adoptee slash um i don't know if they wanted children a family or people to do things for them. I'm not quite sure still to this day. Um, so I spent a lot of time in my room alone or in libraries or even out I'd make caves um, in the dirt in the side of a hill. Um, so, and in parks, under bridges, I mean, weird things like that. I have had nothing but alone and meditative time with God and I. That's the only guidance I have ever had in my life. So I'm a little leery. I have big respect for people. I see God in their heart. I see them, and I have big respect. I also have big, it's, intrepidations, big, um, um, not fears, because that would mean it was personal. I'm kind of like, for myself, and my own spirituality, and knowledge of other religions around the world, I'm kind of like, fearless in that aspect, even, even witchcraft, or whatever. I have studied everything I could get my hands on and some that I didn't but just kind of came to me in different ways through other people and whatnot so but I just wanted to clear that up so for my own personal beliefs what what brings you closer to our creator that's that's all good I'm um just leery in that sense for other people i hope you get me i hope you feel me because it's real and so i don't call it meditation i call and i don't really even pray like that i mean i specifically will ask yeah and i usually am asking for other people i don't like bugging god i have a a desire for a closeness with um, family and people that I haven't ever really experienced except with my own kids. And even that wasn't the, the human relationship and friends that I have desired. Um, people do fall short. I mean, don't get me wrong, but there's, there's things like jealousy. I mean, even mothers against their daughters, you know. It, it's... I, I have almost no words. It could be maybe a woman has a husband. Another woman may think she has it made in the shade. And so she gets the evil eye, you know. I was looking for, I ran across a young, well, you know, younger than me, but about a middle-aged lady that was talking to other people about 
women and jealousy and that type of thing and how a woman won't actually like she says she's your friend but she won't say well that's a cute top but then she'll go out and buy the same damn top you just were wearing you know or or you'll have ones that are um instead of ooh you lost 20 pounds you look wonderful they'll they'll be like um I heard one time somebody, I don't need to name names, but went to the in neighbors and told them I had cancer because I was so thin at that time. I'm like, wow. Okay. But do you see what I'm saying? And it even could be guys being jealous at you and shit. And I've seen guys do that to guys and women and everything else. So finding a good friend that, um, isn't backstabbing you for some little idiosyncrasy that they have going on. That's that's a rare thing in life, you know. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to be all over the map like I always am. I'm just chatting with people. Sometimes it could be family, it could be friends, um, subs, people that um, want some of the information that I might um, recall or find or whatever for everybody. It's, I'm a variety over here. So anyway, <laughs> I do have more on my mind. I just have to get there. I, I don't know. I'm in a, when I get, I'm happy. I'm happy inside and I get like, um, I don't, actually have like hypertension or anything but when you use a lot of your adrenaline in your life and I found that even put myself in that chill mode was more dangerous for my body that other people could attack me if I didn't have my guard up so in a sense and I found that if I let that go, I get surprised. It does hurt my heart physically. So I have this thing going on inside me that other people might not understand, but it's an actual physical thing to protect myself. So, <clears throat> excuse me a moment. Sad but true. Cheers, everybody. Because believe me, that old hearts, those hearts of ours, um, they can break. And sometimes there's really nothing you can do with that broken part. When I met Doug, he told me he there's new welding rods that could um, uh, weld any anything. He said, I can fix everything but maybe a broken heart and he said I might be able to fix that too and I'm thinking yeah same for me buddy <laughs> but that is our relationship we're like that with each other so yeah it's it's rough you know life's rough sometimes so it's like today he went shopping for me I'm like um, I try not when he gets these things, I won't say, I won't call any names or nothing. Everybody's different. So I just told him, I said, just get whatever you're going to get and whatever you, you're doing, you're just perfect. I said, you're just, you're doing it perfect. And he said to me, that I was perfect too for myself and some some smart assy funny thing because this dude is witty and so we got this thing going on um god what did he say he's like uh he said and I was gonna say perfectly normal so I told him well who wants to be normal you know so anyway just funny exchanges that we have with each other sometimes they're brutal but you know such is life you know 
So yeah, I'm a little I'm a little hard to take sometimes if you know that the love's always there regardless of anything. I always have a reason if I feel like I'm um not in attack mode, but I also am a teacher. I actually have taught in my life lots and when I see something where I can put something somewhere, I just know that there's different ways that I have to say something, no matter the impact or even if I get something a little back that I'm probably well deserving because of my delivery. But I hope, I hope this made sense to the person that I'm talking to because I have respect for people. I don't want to come off like I don't, unless you deserve it, you know, but, you know, I will, um, I try to choose my words wisely, I try to, try to, um, clear my mind before I come on here and talk about the subjects that I want to discuss, you know, anyway. So that's some of what's going on in my mind today. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, what's that? Do you remember the a movie? It was called uh, The World uh, According to Garp or something like it had like Sally Fields and just a bunch of oddballs. One of the strangest movies. I think I watched it twice. I don't know why. Maybe because it was so weird, you know. But, yeah, it was a strange movie back in the 70s, I think. <laughs> so. The reason, and I remember, that's why I watched it twice. I didn't have any money. I had two kids. I went and gave plasma. So I'd be sitting there with this needle in my arm, and I'd never poked anything in myself, but I did do that. And, you know, you get all cold when they put it back in you and all that stuff, and I had, I'd almost die doing this stuff. It was crazy. I'll never do nothing like that again, but I had to, really. Gas money, diapers, things, trying to see the... What we were doing in life um, in the construction field, well, first we were in the oil field, the bottom fell out. No, first was the wood industry, the oil field, then um, the building scene again got all rugged, and uh, it was crazy times, but yeah, we weren't the only ones there, but yeah. But the stupid movie would be playing there all the time when I was there. Wow. And I had this one doctor. I think it was a doctor. I laid down there. You got to get like a checkup before you can give your blood, you know. And he's like, you really have a long body. And I'm thinking, well. Uh, yeah, my legs are long, my feet are long, my fingers are long, <laughs> my nose is long, yeah, I guess, oh, hey, I should have said so long, buddy, you know, anyway, what a weirdo, the way he was looking over me like that pervert type feeling that I even get, I get, um, you know, there are certain ways adults can even look at children, and it, God forbid if you say something around me, but I mean, just the way people look at kids is enough to set me off. I'm uh, real sensitive to, to perversions in this world, you know, so big time. And it, and it, it may be illegal in... in the eyes of justice of what's right and wrong within a person's soul. But I believe it should be a crime, a punishable crime. Like if you see some perv looking at a baby the wrong way, you could like go beyond citizen's arrest and slap that thing upside its head. You know, that's what I'm talking about. 
how else are we going to deal with it? What, are we expected to just let the evils on this planet slide? You know, and that is why we have jails, you know. So, yeah. I was incarcerated a lot when I was a kid. I started running away at five years old. But I successfully did it at 12 and they kept bringing me back. They had APBs out on me. They just did not know what to do with me. I made it down to Florida, from Minnesota to Florida. And then I got busted down there. But I met a bunch of cool kids. And, yeah. Anyway, long stories. But till, till, they, till I finally took the people to court and told the courts, look. I'm not afraid to work, and I had a job and a place to live. And I was working for the school system as a student teacher with third and fourth graders at that time. So I was able to take those people to court and, you know, get emancipated. And, and then I didn't have to worry about getting locked up for trying to get away from... Uh, Ugh. Well, if you know what um, people in society that usually are like government workers, um, business owners, uh, pretty well-to-do people that are Masonically inclined, I'll just say, or connected or aff affiliated groups. Then, then you'll know where I'm coming from and why I couldn't stand being around it. Because that is sorcery and witchcraft um, on the dark spectrum. And that was my greatest topic today that's been on my mind. You hear these people that call themselves world leaders that all get together and talk about one world government and one world religion, one world this, that, whatever, or the next thing. You imagine how the Native Americans feel hearing that? That now, not just everybody else, because they love people, it doesn't matter, but now these people are saying that they not only want to genocide that whole community, and it's still going on, by the way, in some really sneaky, shady ways. Some of them don't even have clean drinking water when they should be living underneath the falls by Yosemite in the most beautiful places or whatever, and rent it out to the government so people can come and but that's another story. But can you imagine how the people in their own country that can't even run their own government for everybody feels hearing that there's a group of nefarious workers that want to come in here and say that we're now all one world order. You imagine how the indigenous people around the world feel hearing that sh that's too fucked up for me I can't stand it anymore you know that's that's beyond screwed up my advice for the whole United States of America when these um tyrannists come into our country with their bullshit like that. What they do, a plan. If you've seen the 20, 20 and 2030 20, agendas that they've stepped up some of their increments of what actually is in a playbook, <clears throat> you see them stepping it up and it makes you wonder what next, okay? Like the Project Blue Beam, which I've seen the schematics on that. I've actually seen it demonstrated in the sky um, more than once. So whatever it's going to be, their fake alien invasion, 
that they have to say that the world has to unite to fight against this or the um, it won't be fake destruction that they're going to cause with this chaos. The destruction in the chaos is going to be real, just like the rest of baloney that they've been pulling out here. Now, talk about baloney. I'm going to throw Hillary Clinton in there one day today. Ooh, like you have brain enough to control my world. Or their world, you freaking snake. Anyway, takes a village to raise a child. No, you keep your freaking village away from my child. Bitch. Anyway, I get the point and I understand what she's saying, but that is not what they're saying. You know? Anyway, so I'll get back <laughs> on track of my um, Native Americans and the people in the United States. If something like that goes down, I would suggest um, asking advice from some of the elders in in your red communities around you. Talk to the people around you that are native here. And um, some of that is African blood, but like with me, mine um, stems from uh, uh, Indo-European and Polynesian type influences on like the Gonquin type blood types like Poetan and Sioux. Um, and everything else that I am, but like everything, <laughs> really. So, um, so anyway, I would suggest getting to know some of the indigenous around your community and talking to them. See, how do they, I mean, treaties have been broken right to this day. Um, Three years ago now, they moved more people in on um, sovereign nation land in Oklahoma. I mean, these things are still happening. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. This is true. These And right up in 1976 in my area, they were taking kids out of homes and incarcerating the mothers in mental hospitals and taking their children and putting them in Catholic schools and abusing them. So, I, and the women also had all kinds of chemical shock treatments and different things. These things are way too recent, you know? So anyway, um, and there's still more. But, and I'm gonna tell you about another big one. I think it was, um, Somewhere kind of southeast, mid-southeast, I'm going to say probably like, I'm maybe not Tennessee or as far over as like uh, West Virginia or something, but somewhere off in there, it could have been even Georgia, I can't remember, but there was um, Native Americans that they had had this so-called treaties and whatever, and they didn't give the people warning enough to actually, and they had homes there. They flooded a valley from a dam that they had had and made a lake out of the people's bodies. And it's still there today. And then there's people too that weren't just like African American, not just slaves, but actually, um, enlisted in the Civil War to go north and slaughter the Plains Indians. A lot of, and if they were slaves, were set free just to go fight in the army. And a lot of those families kept that, um, well, you could get a good education and have a steady job type of mindset. Um, in those cultures like that, which always has made me sick inside. 
for people like that. And the Native Americans, like my grandfather that went and fought in the war, that makes me sick. He was a cop. No, I don't, I, that's, you know, that's cool. You're local. <laughs> You're taking care of things. But other than that, stay home. That's what we have the United Nations for. You go fight that war. We pay for the United Nations. We pay to be a part. And there's armaments and all kinds of everything they need to do in other countries. And American Americans can protect Americans. How about that? How about if our American armed forces do control our borders and keep the new world order out of America? It's already been invaded. I don't think the indigenous deserve that twice. Does anybody else? How about Africa? How about um, where's another big place they try and manipulate people. Africa's bad. Um, let me think. Australia. It was over there in Australia. Really? See what I mean about the indigenous people? Look what's happening to them over and over and over again until there's actually Nobody left besides the dark cabal controlling everybody all over the world. So like I say, get to know some of the red people around your community if you most possibly can. These are sovereign people. And that's the mindset that the United States of America has to take against this war machine coming after the whole world after your kids, my kids, and everybody else's. They don't care about anybody else but their bloodline, period. That's even my father's bloodline, really. These monsters. So anyway. That's, that's a big deal. I, I hope everybody understands how important this is to understand what they actually have taken steps to implement all this and the baloney that they're, I mean, um, okay, even if people believe in aliens, you know, I I know every monster on this planet looks like a human being. You know? That's what my six and some decades has told me. And I was raised by aliens. They still look like human beings. Well, one doesn't. He's dead. But the other one resembles a human. You know? And that's as close to when when you cold blooded and cold blooded is just what it is, and people that are like um off some of them are off to their own accord in their generations of this offness that they have bred is an intentional thing. It's not just um, spirituality that we're fighting this shit. It's physical, you know. This is real, you know. It's like my dangers in my life. I don't fear them, but I wouldn't be foolish enough to think that they're not real, you know. Just like my combat of nature with my martial arts, which I also started at 15. But um, if you can, like, if you're a woman and you're sparring with a man, if you can spar and it's a 
touch sparring, not an actual, um, you're ready to kill each other. If you can actually spar and not harm another human being, that's a good sparring match. It's good workout. That's fun. But then you got these men that the minute you even broach the subject that you are skilled as a warrior, they're like, well, I can kill you. You know, that's their attitude. It isn't like, you know what, lady, I'm not going to fight with you. If I, and I've heard that either in the ether or personally, like very few times in my life, has a man been gentleman enough to put me in my ethereal place? And that that squelches my combat of nature. It's humiliating and it makes me feel stupid, but I love it. And that's the way men should be on this planet, you know. And I am one to bring out a bad nature if it's there. That's what I do, and I do it well. <laughs> so I hope that kind of, I hope that captured a little bit of my personality for some of the newer people here. So, yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> you know. I'm going to get this uploaded, everyone. I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping you all have a really good week when, weekend. I appreciate you joining me. Have a good night or day, wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Hey, talk, talk to some red people. Ask them. I want to know, how do you feel? with the threat of an invasion from the dark cabal against everyone's bloodlines. How do you feel about that? I'm not too pleased. I feel like uh, being a little bit sovereign myself. How about you? Localize our governments. And let's get the freaks out of here. We can do state-to-state -state contracts we, we're smart. We can work this stuff out. That's what they did in the past. So, okay, everybody. Peace. Talk to you tomorrow.